box here now has V4. Oh, you got the F4 F7 box. F7 flight okay, control. this is just empty box. No, oh, it's in there. Well, I don't know. I didn't actually look. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's still sealed in. The difference between the V1 and 2 uses the MPU6000 gyro. V3 uses the BMI270. Yeah. And V4 uses uh, some of the new some shit. Of, some of the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. But you've, Yvonne made a special karate preset if you have the BMI270. Yeah, this is for BMI270. Up. Done. Other side. Look, I always look, I. With this one, with V4, you should be good with just karate. Just use karate preset with this one, it should be good. Okay, so it's about the same yeah, yeah. type of... Uh, it's a little bit more noisy than NPU 6000, at least that's what we think, but it's just a little bit, doesn't really matter. So you can use the same settings on yeah. your karate too? Yeah. Apparently this should be even better than NPU 6000, like a little less latency. Nice. Yeah. So that's what's going to happen with the chip shortage. We may have to switch gyros here and there, or other yeah. small components, but the Betaflight team is going to keep making sure this is foxier actually thanks to foxier yeah, because they've foxier. been like they've been listening to pilots a lot of people complain about v3 because it has extra prop wash and nobody knows is it because it's like lower uh, refresh rate or it's more filtering on v3 i i personally didn't have any problems with v3 yeah, after I, a little bit of tuning but i have uh, a lot of v3 i didn't notice yeah, but people complain i guess because a bunch of people fly defaults bunch of people didn't use like correct preset option so they complain about uh, ProFosh and that's why Fox listened and then released this one. They found v4. like a new gyro. So if you have three V3, don't worry, just use the BMI270 yeah. preset. But if you have the V4 that just came out, you can use all the same presets. Yeah, yeah. No need to I worry. I still have a bunch of V3, like I'm not complaining, I'm still gonna use them. Like, yeah, I got same. a bunch of these, but I don't think it's any like better or anything. You can tune right. all, they're all, they're all great. Yeah. So I did get this for free and a set of the V3. But if you look at my drawer, I have like 10 of them. Yeah. So I bought all the other nine. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow, guys. Yeah. But I bought those because I could have bought any of them. I got stuff sent to me by a lot of places. This is the one I choose to fly. Yeah. Was well, so, that what you fly too? Uh, yeah. Foxier? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, exclusively Foxier and Open Racer. Foxier stack. We're also going to be checking out the long ESC version. Compare it right here to the standard wide one that's thick the foxier line of flight controllers their f7 flight controllers now enters their fourth generation and i've been using them for quite some time now what's the main difference between the v2 v3 and v4 well pretty much the only difference here is the gyro the betaflight developers came up with a karate tune preset checkbox that you could put if you're running the bmi 270 gyro and it actually worked perfectly fine so fine in fact that i totally stocked up on v3s i have like almost 10 of them and uh, i'm totally fine with that now for the v4 and as you can see they're pretty much indistinguishable from each other so much so that i don't even want to open both of these at the same time because i'll probably get them confused but it's the same great pad layout that we're used to the camera pads at the back right here comes with the gummies you also have the bms thomas version of both of these which kind of has a rearrangement of the pads so that all of your pads that you need are on this side on that version i actually like both i buy both of them for certain racing builds uh min champ prefers to use this version uh, but other ones depending on how much room you have on your stack you may want the one with the pads over there really cool that foxier is having their finger on the pulse of the industry they're listening to pilots they're really just taking over a variety of ways and so in the racing environment there usually is a couple of products that are the most used and but this year i've seen more people running foxier than ever before usually there's a little bit more variation part of that also is due to chip shortage one of the other top great contenders is the hobbywing esc and flight controller but those have been extremely hard to get you can always look to what the races are running if you want to know what is the most performance out there racers don't typically run the cheapest stuff but they usually try to run the highest performing because for them competition is the greatest value money is no object so it's very easy to kind of tell what the best in the market is based on that 
chip shortage pricing is still all over the place light controllers now are up to about 53 54 dollars a pop which is still a significant increase compared to the 30 33 dollars that we used to see just a couple of years ago escs are starting to come back down speaking of fox here escs have you seen this new 60 amp long version the current 60 amp is super thick and wide uh, but this one takes in the other direction for your more narrower build so that you don't have esc hanging off the side but for this type of a build the 40 amp that's in here will work really nice it's the 45 amp reaper here is the 60 amp standard the very wide one it's essentially 20 by 20 mounting but with 30 by 30 footprint and here is the new slim version it's essentially just rearrangement of the components to make it a bit longer but less wide here's the 533 switchback frame so what do you notice with the wide one it actually hangs off the edges just a little bit so in a very hard sideways impact like if you misjudged and slid into a gate you could actually physically impact the esc and there's no easier way to kill an electronic speed controller than physically impacting it so what they've done is made a slimmer option doesn't take up as much width and now if you look at it from the bottom you actually can no longer see the sides and you'll impact this carbon first and not the esc so it's basically the same thing just depending on what you're building which your preference is maybe it just fits inside of your build a little bit easier just a little update to let you know what the difference is between these and what the racers are using i like to make these every once in a while people want to know what's the best at the time what's the most performance at the time who's putting the most abuse and doing the most testing it's generally the racers Thanks guys. What do you guys think in the comments? What type of stacks are you running these days?